Lumberjacks, also called woodcutters or shanty boys, were skilled workers responsible for felling trees using saws, axes, and various tools. Once cut, the logs were transported and transformed into wood products. Living a nomadic lifestyle, lumberjacks followed timber harvesting opportunities, often trekking long distances on foot to reach logging camps. Their workdays extended from sunrise to sunset, six days a week. Join us in this video as we explore how lumberjacks cut down the world's largest trees. Giant sequoias and coastal redwoods are among the largest and most magnificent trees in the world. The largest tree ever cut down was also a giant sequoia, nicknamed the Mark Twain tree, which was discovered in California in the late 1800s and stood at over 300 feet tall with a diameter of 45 feet. It was sadly cut down in 1891 and used for building materials. In California's Sequoia National Park, a giant sequoia, Sequoia dendron giganteum, is the world's tallest tree. The tree, which is named General Sherman, is about 52,500 square feet, 1,487 cubic meters. That's more than half the volume of an Olympic-sized swimming pool, which is typically measured at 88,500 cubic feet, 2,506 cubic meters. General Sherman is expected to be about 2,000 years old. According to tree ring counts, it is only a middle-aged giant sequoia, although other trees are estimated to be more than 3,220 years old. In 2006, the tree lost a large branch that shattered a new walkway and fence below. It didn't affect General Sherman's ranking as the world's tallest tree, however, because it was determined by trunk volume rather than branches. Giant sequoias can be found in the Sierra Nevada mountains of California, USA. They are known for their incredible size, with some reaching heights of over 300 feet and having a trunk diameter of more than 30 feet. These giants are significant because they are some of the oldest living organisms on Earth. Giant sequoias grow so large because they live a long time and grow quickly. To survive, giant sequoias require a lot of water which they primarily obtain from the Sierra snowpack, which accumulates over the winter months and soaks into the ground when it melts. Since they require well-drained soil, walking around the base of giant sequoia can do them harm as it compacts the soil around their shallow roots and prevents the trees from getting enough water. Giant sequoias can shield themselves from natural hazards, allowing them to live for thousands of years. They are too large to be blown over in the wind, and their bark is thick and rich in tannins, which protect them from fire and insect damage. The giant sequoia forest is made up of a significant component of fire. Sequoia seedlings need nutrient-rich soil, lots of sunlight, and a climate free from competition from other plants to thrive. All of these conditions are met by regular wildfires, which are therefore vital to the survival of sequoia trees. In recent years, fire suppression strategies have increased the density of dense, brushy undergrowth and decreased the likelihood of giant sequoia regeneration. Coastal redwoods, also known as California redwoods, are found along the coast of California. They are the tallest trees on the planet, with some towering over 350 feet. These majestic trees are significant not only for their impressive size, but also for their vital role in providing habitat for various species and their ability to absorb carbon dioxide, helping combat climate change. Visiting these towering giants is a humbling experience that reminds us of the incredible beauty and grandeur of nature. The coast redwood is one of the world's fastest growing conifers or cone-bearing trees. Redwood cones are very small, only about an inch in diameter compared to the tree's size. Each cone contains a few dozen tiny seeds, 
it would take about 100,000 seeds to weigh a pound. Redwood seedlings can grow quickly, sometimes more than a foot per year, under ideal conditions. Young trees also sprout from the base of their parents' trunk, taking advantage of the existing root system's energy and nutrient riches. Since they rid the forest floor of combustible materials, frequent naturally occurring fires play a vital role in preserving coast redwood forests. Redwood seedlings and other plants are allowed to flourish in forests as a result of forest fires. In contrast, decades of fire suppression techniques usually result in the accumulation of dead plant material, which can fuel intense, destructive fires. Redwoods can survive natural forest fires due to their thick, up to 12 inches bark. Redwoods get their name from the beautiful reddish hue of their bark. Redwood bark is soft, fibrous, and rich in tannins, which help prevent insect damage. Through our website, you can learn more about the effect of fire on our redwood and sequoia forests. Temperatures are moderate year-round in areas where coast redwoods occur. During the winter months, heavy rains provide the trees with much-needed water, while dense summer fog adds moisture to the forest during the dry summer months. Redwoods even make their own rain by soaking up fog on their leaves. The coastal fog condenses on redwood needles, resulting in water droplets. Some of the water is absorbed by the needles, while others are drained to the ground, supplying water to the redwood forest understory. However, big trees are an essential component of every forest ecosystem. Big trees absorb a large amount of carbon, provide important plant habitats, encourage new tree growth, and provide much needed shade. The largest 1% of trees, or those that measure about two feet or more in diameter, are considered the largest trees in any forest. Having discussed the tree titans, it is important to reveal the tools used in falling them, Therefore, what are these tools used for cutting these titans and other giant trees? The lumberjack gear is a skill-enhancing clothing set that gives you more enjoyment when wearing it while woodcutting. Lumberjacks usually work outside and they need warm yet durable clothing. Flannel fits both of those criteria, warm and soft against your skin yet strong fiber that will be resistant to tears and rips and yet last a long time. When it comes to cutting down trees, chainsaws are the go-to tool for lumberjacks. These powerful machines use a rotating chain with sharp teeth to quickly and efficiently cut through wood. They come in different sizes and power levels, depending on the job at hand. For those massive trees, you'd need a heavy-duty chainsaw to get the job done. Felling axes, sometimes called felling wedges, are another essential tool for lumberjacks. These specialized axes have a curved blade and a long handle, allowing for precise and controlled chopping of trees. They're used to make strategic cuts in the tree trunk to guide its fall in the desired direction. Now, when it comes to dealing with really large trees, heavy machinery comes into play. Lumberjacks may use equipment like feller bunchers, which are large machines with a cutting head that can grab and cut multiple trees at once. They're especially useful in clear-cutting operations. Another heavy-duty machine is the skidder, which is used to transport felled trees from the forest to a processing area. Skidders have powerful winches and grapples to lift and move logs, making the process more efficient. It's important to note that modern lumberjacks prioritize safety and sustainability in their work. They undergo training and use protective gear, such as helmets, safety goggles, and chainsaw chaps to minimize the risk of accidents. That's a glimpse into the tools and machinery used by modern lumberjacks, especially when dealing with large trees. It's quite fascinating how technology has advanced to make their work more efficient and safer. 
Let's dive into the techniques used to safely and efficiently cut down huge trees. After revealing the tools and machinery used for cutting giant trees, there are techniques used in handling these tools for cutting bigger trees. What are the methods used in felling these big trees? The cutting down of the world's biggest tree was a tragic event that had a major effect on the environment and the surrounding communities. The tree was over 2,000 years old and stood at a towering height of over 300 feet. Its sheer size and age make it a natural wonder and a symbol of nature's beauty. Hand felling is the oldest and most basic way to cut down trees. It involves cutting a notch on the side of the tree facing the desired direction of fall with an ax or chainsaw, then making a vertical cut on the opposite side of the tree. The tree will fall in the correct direction as a result of this. One commonly used technique is directional felling. This method involves carefully planning the direction in which the tree will fall. Directional felling is a more advanced technique that is still being used today. It involves creating a notch and making a horizontal cut on the opposite side of the tree, but using a felling wedge or other device instead of allowing the tree to fall freely. Lumberjacks assess the tree's lean surrounding obstacles and wind conditions to determine the best direction for the tree to fall without causing damage or posing a risk to people or property. They make strategic cuts on the tree trunk to guide its fall in the desired direction. To initiate directional felling, lumberjacks often use a technique called undercutting. They make a horizontal cut on the side of the tree facing the intended direction of the fall. This cut is made low on the trunk and is usually about one third of the tree's diameter. The undercut helps to control the tree's fall and prevents the tree from splitting or kicking back during the process. In addition to undercutting, lumberjacks may use wedges or jacks to further control the tree's fall. These tools are inserted into the cut made by the undercut and help to create a controlled break in the tree. By placing wedges or jacks strategically, lumberjacks can influence the direction and speed of the tree's fall, ensuring it falls safely and predictably. In some situations, it is not safe to allow a tree to fall freely. Here's where controlled demolition comes in. To carefully lower the tree to the ground in sections, this method involves using ropes, pulleys, and other tools. It's worth mentioning that the techniques used by lumberjacks prioritize safety and minimize environmental impact. Lumberjacks receive training on proper cutting techniques and adhere to industry standards to ensure their own and others' safety. Those are some of the techniques used to safely and efficiently cut down huge trees, including directional felling, undercutting, and the use of wedges or jacks. It's impressive how these techniques allow lumberjacks to carefully control the process and ensure the safety of everyone involved. Tree felling can have a devastating effect on the environment. Trees play a vital role in the ecosystem, providing habitat for animals and helping to regulate the weather. A tree's destruction can have a ripple effect on the surrounding ecosystem. Animals that depend on the tree for food and shelter may be compelled to relocate, and the tree's destruction can also affect the soil and water supply. Cutting down trees has great effects on the environment. What are the effects of cutting down trees on the ecosystem? Trees and other vegetation destruction can result in climate change, desertification, soil erosion, fewer crops, flooding, increased greenhouse gas emissions in the atmosphere, and a variety of problems for indigenous people. Deforestation occurs for a variety of reasons. 
deforestation has a significant and troubling effect on animals and plant species as a result of their loss of habitat. Forests cover 70% of all land animals and plant species. Deforestation impacts not only species that are well known to us, but also those that are unknown. The trees of the rainforest that provide shelter to some species also provide the canopy that regulates the temperature. Deforestation results in a more drastic temperature change from day to night, much like a desert, which may prove fatal to many people. Trees also help regulate the water content in the atmosphere. The Amazon rainforest is one of the world's most important sources of water. Its millions of trees work together to evaporate water into the atmosphere, creating atmospheric rivers that control the Earth's weather patterns. There is less water in the air in deforested areas to be returned to the soil. This leads to dry soil and an inability to grow crops. Cutting down large trees can have significant environmental impacts. However, sustainable logging practices and reforestation efforts play a crucial role in mitigating these impacts and preserving the ecosystem. Sustainable logging practices aim to minimize the negative effects of tree cutting. They involve careful planning, selective harvesting, and minimizing damage to the surrounding environment. By selectively choosing which trees to cut and leaving behind healthy trees and vegetation, sustainable logging helps maintain the overall health and biodiversity of the forest. Reforestation efforts are also essential in offsetting the loss of trees. After logging, replanting trees in the harvested areas helps to restore the forest ecosystem. Reforestation programs ensure that new trees are planted, allowing the forest to regenerate and providing habitat for wildlife. These efforts help to maintain the ecological balance and preserve the benefits that forests provide, such as carbon sequestration, soil stability, and water regulation. Large trees play a vital role in the ecosystem. They provide habitat for numerous species, including birds, mammals, and insects. The canopy of large trees offers shade and shelter, creating microhabitats for plants and animals. Additionally, large trees contribute to carbon sequestration, helping to mitigate climate change by absorbing and storing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. It's important to remember that responsible logging practices, reforestation efforts, and the preservation of large trees are crucial for maintaining a healthy and sustainable environment. By implementing sustainable practices and supporting reforestation initiatives, we can minimize the environmental impact of cutting down large trees and ensure the long-term health of our forests. I hope this sheds some light on the environmental impact of cutting down large trees and the efforts undertaken to mitigate these impacts. Let's continue to support sustainable practices and conservation efforts to protect our precious ecosystems. What are the transformation processes of fallen trees from forest to timber products? Let's track the journey of a felled tree from the forest to its final destination, like a lumber mill or a furniture workshop. It's fascinating to see the transformation from a tree to a timber product. The first step in preparing a tree for commercial use is felling. This procedure is usually carried out in the winter when the tree has less moisture content. Trees can have more than 50% water content in the summer months. This increased weight increases the cost of transport, handling, and initial preparation for the sawmill. Trees have a high water content even in the winter. A forestry worker selects mature trees. Only older trees are selected, allowing the younger trees to mature. Felled trees are replaced by saplings. The forest, therefore, is healthy. It should not run out of trees. A skilled forestry specialist will use a chainsaw to cut small numbers of trees each day. 
When large numbers of trees are to be harvested, a team of forest workers will work together to remove them. In large forests such as Norway, specially designed tractors with cutters and grabbers can be used to cut hundreds of trees in one day. Once a tree is cut down, it is typically transported to a sawmill or a lumber mill. At the mill, the tree undergoes various processes to convert it into usable timber. The first step is debarking, where the outer bark is removed from the tree trunk. Then the tree is cut into logs of desired lengths. Next, the logs are taken to a sawing area, where they are sliced into boards, planks, or beams. The logs are cut into boards at the sawmill using tools such as circular saws and band saws. This is called a conversion. The first step in conversion is called breaking down, which stands for rough sawing. Resawing is a second stage that involves more precise or fine cutting and finishing, such as planning and further machining. This process is called sawmilling, and it involves cutting the logs into different sizes and shapes according to the intended use. The sawn timber is then sorted based on its quality and dimensions. After sawmilling, the timber is often dried in a kiln to reduce its moisture content. This helps to prevent warping, cracking, and decay. Once dried, the timber is ready for further processing or can be sold as is. Depending on its destination, the timber may be sent to a furniture workshop, construction site, or other manufacturing facility. In a furniture workshop, skilled craftsmen transform the timber into beautiful pieces of furniture. They shape, join, and finish the wood to create chairs, tables, cabinets, and more. In construction, the timber may be used for framing, flooring, or other structural purposes. It can also be processed into veneers, plywood, or engineered wood products for various applications. From the forest to its final destination, a felled tree goes through a series of steps, including transportation, milling, drying, and processing, to become a valuable timber product. Each stage of the journey contributes to the transformation of the tree, ensuring that it serves a purpose in our daily lives. I hope this gives you a glimpse into the journey of a felled tree and how it becomes a timber product. It's amazing to see how nature's resources can be transformed into useful and beautiful creations.